Sorry, this might be my favorite soundtrack. Journey of the Silius is up there. I think I like my kids more. But there's only like four songs. So, what can you do? Anyways. What's up, everybody? Dr. Adam OS here. Or Dr. Oz, for short. <laughs> Not to be confused with Dr. Oz. Of course, neither one of us are doctors. But that's a whole other thing, right? I'm going to show you guys how to clean this bad boy up. I'm sure a lot of you have gotten games like this. From a, a store, I got this one from the exchange, as you can see right there on the sticker. Um, they put these stupid stickers on there. They sell you these games that I don't know if you probably can't tell. Uh, this one's kind of dirty. Like it's, you can actually see dirt on it. Uh, the case is pretty be beat up. Uh, so uh, this is a game though that you don't really need. Why is my mic on? Yes. Professional streamer here. Alright. So. This isn't a game that has like actual physical damage. This one just needs clean. Uh, you'll see this a lot. But you'll see a lot of st a lot of stores will put these games on sale. Although they'll only charge like 5 bucks or something. Like this one was only 8 uh, Which is actually not significantly cheaper. But a little bit. Because they, they're oh well it's dirty. And people don't know how to clean it. And it'll get people pissed so we'll charge less money so if you see that like if, there, if there's physical harm to the game or physical damage then that's a whole nother case don't get it uh but if, if you see like just dirt and i'll show you with the pins and stuff uh or well i shouldn't say the pins but you know what i'm saying the the 72 brass things i'm calling them pins but like when it's just that you can clean them up pretty well here so the first thing you want to do is you want to take off anything that isn't attached to one of the original labels like uh like this sticker and this one on the back uh and see if you can see right here it says 1985 uh that means it's one of the original stickers and uh this one says 1988 so this is it's a legit copy of the game from the outside we're hoping we can only tell when we open it up uh but see this sticker actually came off not too bad but sometimes these stickers stay on pretty well um or maybe I should put a here. Actually, let's go through. Sorry, I I, I haven't done this at all. Uh, what's up, Anarchy? Charlie? <clears throat> uh, no, you didn't miss anything. <laughs> so actually, before we do the sticker, we should have went over our list of products. Okay. So what I'm going to be using today, there's two different types of cleaning products. We have just regular basic. I mean, I got this from the dollar store. It doesn't fucking matter. It's water with chemicals in it. Um. Because remember, this is brass. We're cleaning brass. It's not going to hurt it. Uh, but yeah, just like some glass cleaner. Uh, you know, Windex. Sure. That's the name brand. Uh, and then we want... I like these Clorox wipes. But no bleach. See, I even write on it. No bleach. No bleach. They, see, this one even says bleach free on it. Uh, you want no bleach. Bleach is bad. Bleach bad. BB. Bleach bad. Doesn't matter. I got the fresh scent doesn't fucking matter as long as it's a disinfectant wipe you're good so those are the two uh, cleaning products an eraser you can use an eraser uh, I think the eraser does does it or doesn't clean it is good it gets shit off but anything gets shit off I can I can use my ass cheek and wipe it on there and it'll get shit off but no eraser doesn't do anything you know specific uh, and yeah, the stickers on the discs are just unforgivable. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, I, I've always had two cameras. I just got a new one, like, last year. So I haven't been using the old one because it remember, used to phase out randomly. All right, so other products. So we got our Windex and our disinfectant wipes. These are our cleaning solutions. Um, we also, I'm, I'm going to use some cleaning duster. Now, you don't need this. Uh, this is just your... <laughs> Your air sprays. I almost, sp I almost sprayed our uh, drink of choice, of course, is tea and treat. Uh, I hope my uh, volume is good. I actually didn't test it, so if the music's too loud, let me know. But uh, yeah, we're going to use a little bit of this, but not much. Um, you can actually get away with not using this at all, so keep that in mind as well. I'll try to put them all in, all in here. Oh, 
Okay. And then we're going to use paper towels. You got to have paper towels. Oh, no. I drink high C's still. We're, we're, just, we're going with the titty punch today. We're going with the titty punch. Um, so, yeah. Paper towels. Got to have paper towels. And then these bad boys. Uh... I don't know where I can stick these, maybe here. Uh, Q-tips. You need Q-tips. We're going to have some Q-tips. Those are Q-tips are your best friend. Your best friend in this. Paper towels are good. You'll see why we use those. But Q-tips, baby. Q-tips. All right. So the only other, th the only other things left are the tools then. Um, I am going to be using a set of precision screwdrivers. You can get a, pre a precision screwdriver set for like 15 bucks 20 bucks to get the good ones uh, I recommend these for the cleaning believe it or not we're actually not even going to use these uh, we're going to use these to clean and I'll show you that okay but trust me you want the smaller flathead ones is what you're going for these guys right here see it has a nice flat head to it and uh, it, it'll get in those crevices really well so I'll, sh I'll be showing you and then lastly you want these uh, these tools here now uh, I don't know if you can see on the camera but they have like a star shape to them and they are specific for Nintendo games for cartridges uh, these things right here I'm trying to show them on the camera I know I'm terrible at this I don't really do it uh, but yeah you'll see you'll see a star shape in them uh, I think it's one two three Six, six of them, but it's not. A, it's not a star. It's weird, uh, but it's for the screws in the Nintendo game that are specific to Nintendo. Now I got these at a convention. People sell them all, all over the place. Just get on the internet. You can find them for a couple bucks. They're pretty cheap. Uh, but you want to use these instead of screwdrivers. You don't want to destroy the the thing because if you destroy the the bolt, then you can't get back into the game. Like you'll tighten it in there, and it'll be cool, but then it'll be impossible to get open again. Uh, so just get the tool for the job. It's a couple blocks. Trust me, if this is something you do, it's worth the investment. Um, <coughs> so for cleaning your actual your actual system, you're gonna need something like these. Uh, you know, I got a Captain Clean, and then I got a, a Dox Ultra Two Grand or Two Thousand. Uh, these are old system cleaners, but uh, technically you can do what we're gonna do here to your pin connector. You just got to take apart your system, but uh, these things work actually really well. You just might have to change the pads on them or something, but totally worth it. Spray some Windex on there, jiggle it in and out. These things work great. Um, I have like four of them over there. I just grabbed a few. Sometimes you'll see them. There's like a pink one that looks kind of like the Captain Clean, you know, stuff like that. Um, so, okay. Electronics tool set for 25 bucks. Oh, nice. Uh, like I said, we're not we're not using them for the electronics aspect. We're using them more for uh, you'll you'll see like a bevel. Um, all right. So what what you see on my head? They make these two for a couple bucks at Walmart, and uh, they're they're absolutely amazing. They are little lights that you can turn. Now I like to like hold it in my hand and look at it. And when you have a light source, you can get like shadows and stuff, and you can't really see everything. So uh, we're gonna fire this bad boy up. See, pretty cool, right? Now I take off my glasses because uh, I like to be able to see natural. So if you're a glasses person, you want to use your natural eyes, even if they suck. It's easier to detect uh, dirt and stuff. And I'm sorry for the camera down below; it's gonna make my face look weird. Uh, but that's just part of the deal, right? <laughs> okay. So yes, first thing we do. Uh, we take off this damn sticker, okay, uh, or any other stickers. Make sure they are not covering the the, the stickers that are originally on the game, okay. Uh, so if that's if that ever happens, if there ever is a sticker on there, there's a few things you can do to get that off. You can uh, I like to use a hair dryer, believe it or not, low setting. Don't go high because um, it kind of melts the adhesives and it makes it easier to pull off like you want to hold it on there until it's significantly hot you're not going to damage the game because believe it or not if you, you can leave a game like this out in the sun for weeks and it does nothing your hair dryer can't even hit that temperature but you know what i'm saying just 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 a low heat keep it on there um i mean if you want to do high if your hair dryer sucks go for it you know just make sure just watch your watch your original labels um and then you never want to scratch 
You never want to scratch. You only want to pull. So like if there's like if you take off your sticker and there's like some adhesive left, you want to like just uh, rub rub your finger on it just slightly. Don't push down and just kind of like try to take the adhesive off. Now there's things you can use like Goo Gone and stuff to get adhesives off, but it will damage the sticker. Maybe you won't see it, but like after years and years it'll start to decay and you'll see like a spot there or a hole after a while so you want to try to not use chemicals to get stuff off the original stickers um oh, okay i see um yeah i forgot okay so yeah if it's like on here you just kind of want to do this with your thumb you know just slightly you'll feel the tension you'll, you'll feel it but you just just want enough to kind of get that adhesive off you know, it might take forever, but this is how you preserve it without damaging the original sticker, okay? Um, yes, this game is Adventures of Tom Sawyer. They finally had a copy at the exchange. I did not have this game as of yet, so I got it for eight bucks, and we're going to clean it. All right, so let's see. Adjust my light a little bit. Okay. First thing we want to do, we want to grab our tool. Let's go with our smaller one. And, oh, I forgot one last thing I like. Most uh, Dollar Trees, if you guys have Dollar Tree, uh, they have these little like glass dishes. Uh, they're amazing. They're like three for a buck. You know, it's just to use them for like dipping sauces and stuff. But anytime you take apart something, they're great for like little screws and shit. So we're gonna. Oh, sorry. We are going to use that for our screws. See? And these screwdrivers, they are perfect for this. Oh, see, this one's even magnetized. Well, yeah, see, I don't know how good that's going to come out, but that's like your little screw there. It's uh, It's got like six sides to it. Yeah, I don't know if my camera's going to show you anything good. All right, so we're going to then go ahead. There's usually three of them. And then, of course, like some people will take these out and replace them with other little screws. Um, I don't know the dimensions and the size, but they're, they're, you can probably look it up. Uh, if that's the case, you're probably going to use a Phillips head. I say I got these at a convention. Go to a retro gaming convention, and you're you're probably going to find someone who's selling them. Um, ask them if they're magnetized, and if not, I think there's a way to actually magnetize them yourself. But again, I don't know that. I just I had the magnetized ones because, like I said, this is something you're into. Put the money into it. It it's you know it's your it's your hobby okay so okay if you're ever wondering how to like take off an NES cart see the label act like you're reading it and then pull up and then towards you that's so you don't break the little hinges on there <laughs> okay so we have our board but we're good but you you never want to clean your board first because you'll clean your board and then you'll put it somewhere and it'll get dirty. You want your board to be the last thing you clean because you want it to go into a clean environment. Clean, 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 clean. Now for this, uh, I usually put it on a paper towel, but you don't have to do that either. You gotta remember, these things, they're fragile, but they're not made of glass. Or not even that. See, so you can just stick it there. Uh, a lot of people act like they're they're crazy bad. I mean, see, look, you can touch it. You can tap it. It's it's not gonna die. It's not gonna break. Uh, but I, see, the only thing I would say is watch putting it into anything that's like wool or uh, fuzzy, like fuzzy carpet or anything, because it can get into there, and you know that's that's not good. Yeah, the boards they're not very small, but they had, they kept the size of these carts because if you ever open up a game like Legend of Zelda or something with the battery save or something like that, it takes up the whole cart. So, for these games that don't have a battery save, uh, you know. Okay, and for those who do, I can also recommend this. Uh, there's different types of watch batteries you can use. Uh, I like to use the uh, Energizer 2032s because uh, they work for Nintendo and Game Boy, original Game Boy carts. So, like, if you open up a Pokemon game, you're going to see this guy in there. Um, obviously, I've used three out of these four. They do work. Uh, you'll have to know how to solder, though. 
um, or what you can do is you can put like a I, I use a simple uh, C clamp or U clamp sorry it's a U clamp uh, it's it's something else but that that's a whole nother video but I, that, that's my recommendation everyone asks me like what batteries do you use 2032s now th like I said there's other ones but 2032s are common to shit you can find them everywhere now the other ones you're gonna have trouble finding uh, so just the 2032s and yes I am recording this <laughs> um, but yeah that's just my recommendation again I am no expert I'm just a dude who's been doing this for 30 years and my shit is clean as fuck it fires up right away so obviously what I'm doing works so I figured I'd pass it on 2032s titty punch and I know I'm going slow on purpose because I want to make sure I'd say everything alright so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the big big boys like okay so there's detail in my opinion there's detail cleaning and then there's mass cleaning so when I say mass cleaning, I mean like we're just gonna go, we're just gonna go to town, and that is where we get the the non bleach wipes. I'm gonna keep saying that non bleach, non bleach. Now, okay, this isn't going to plan here. Well, when does my channel ever go to plan, right? That's why you guys like it, right? I'm an idiot. All right, so we have our bleach wipe, non bleach, yes. You know, 20 copies of Gyromite to fight a Japanese board adapter? Yeah, good luck. All right. So, we're not going to touch the label, though, with this either. Like, you want to stay away from your labels as much as possible. You know, like, these labels, just don't touch them at all. So, I'm going to hold it like this. And I'm trying to... My light kind of... Okay, there we go. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to go quick. Just get in there. Well, let's move that a little bit. Get in there. Don't be afraid. Like I said, it's a piece of plastic. It's not gonna break. Put put some put some ass into it. You know, like don't be afraid to scrub. You know, get in there. Go over it a few times. You know, like what I like to do is I like to ball it up and then push it into the corners. You know, because you gotta. There's like there's all these weird get arounds you know like these little tabs and whatnot you just want to get in there give it a nice little once over we're gonna do the outside here again watch your label um, we'll do the detail cleaning around the label we'll do the mass cleaning on the outside like like what I'm doing here see um, but when it once it gets towards the label and inside like these little crevice we're gonna wait until we get to the detail cleaning so uh, what we'll do is we'll put a little paper towel down. Oh, where's the edge of my camera here? Oh, all the way to the table, to here, to Teddy Punch. Okay, so if I'm here, we're good. Well, okay, you're ahead of me there, Charlie. That's what we're going to use the uh, precision screwdriver set for. But we'll get there. Just trust me. Um, so we're going to do the other side here. Like I said, ball it up. Get it in those crevices. See, you, you'll get that like soapy look. Don't worry about it. Because we're going we're gonna to take care of it. Like I said, this is just... But this is why you got to be careful of the labels. Because that soapy will, will sink in. You gotta remember these labels are like 30 years old 40 years old so uh, the adhesive and everything in time just time has deteriorated them a little bit so they're more susceptible to water because they're dried out um, so you really want to make sure you just don't touch those if you can um, and see like what we're doing here we're not getting off any like crusty stuff we're just getting off like dirt you know or dust and stuff like that because if you're trying to clean it's kind of like doing dishes in real life if you just throw like a dirty dish with food in the dishwasher it's just washing dirty food it's not washing the dish so that's what we're doing here we're like pre-washing and there we go so uh you just throw i didn't grab a trash can yeah well <clears throat> all right yeah dust and gas and stuff <laughs> yeah Charlie's ahead of the game but that's all right I like that um, all right so now <laughs> what we're gonna do we're gonna let it dry for a second okay we're good. so I, that's why I do it in this order you can do it whatever you want but see like you gotta really let that dry just let it dry um, so we're gonna we're gonna clean our board now while we let that dry now the board this is where we're gonna use our 
cleaning duster. Just like we had to take the dust off of that, off of the, sh off of the shell, the casing, we gotta take the dust off of this. Now this is just air. But sometimes it'll blow out enough air, a concentrated stream, that it, it turns into liquid. How you go, how you not have that happen is don't hold the trigger down. Just, that's it. See, so you hear that? That's all you want to do. So, you always want to, you don't want to go straight on either. You want an angle, because you want to blow the shit off. So, you want to do this. See? No water vapor coming out. Give it a little tap. If you don't want to use the the cleaning duster, I mean you can blow it on yourself, or you can just skip that step. Like I said, I like to get like the natural dust off there, you know, that first coating, so we can get down to it and clean it. Because what happens is if you if you have dust on if you have dust on here and you apply like Windex, it actually turns to like mud. Like think of adding like water to soil, you know, it gets muddy. So you don't want that mud on there. If you just blow the dust off, it creates less of that mud. Um, and then that mud is what will so soak into like the chips and everything. So now we got a pretty decent looking uh, board here. Again, that's why I'm putting it on the glass. Uh, I said like don't use anything like a, a towel that can like grip it. That's why I'm not even using the paper towels. I, I just don't trust them. I don't trust the paper towels. So what we want to do here, we'll grab some Q-tips. We're going to get another paper towel. This is only to absorb the Windex. So what I like to do, is just hit, I put all my Q-tips, I don't know if you guys can see them, but like in order. In fact, I'll do it like I'll do it on here to show you, like this. See how they're all right next to each other? Just do that on here, and then just soak the shit out of them. In fact, you probably could have done this before too, because you want to let them dry a little bit. And then we're going to have a few extra here on the side that are dry. See, so you hit them with that, let it soak in, hit it again, and then let them dry a second. I know that, dude, work with me here, Charlie. I, I, I make like five bucks a month doing this. <laughs> I'm not going to have the best setup. All right. So uh, let those soak in a little bit. Uh, we can check our uh, casing. It's starting to dry up. It usually takes about 10-15 minutes to dry up or start to dry up. All right. So then I take one of the wet ones. I usually like to roll it. Don't push down, but like you'll see, like it'll start to dry off on the paper towel. That's just to get the excess water off. Because you just want it on there for cleaning. You don't want it to be soaking wet. Okay. So what you want to do, you'll see that there are brass connectors there. You've heard of the 72 pins? It's the, it's the brass connectors that the pins are touching. They go into the green, green part. So obviously the green part nullifies the pin connection. So all we're looking at is those brass, those brass little uh, tabs there. We're going to scrape towards the end it's kind of like wiping your ass back to front right so you can already see it's starting to get dirty and just keep rotating your your q-tip and this is why you want to go through them don't rub dirt on dirt so I'm, I'm, I'm slowly rotating my q-tip as I'm brushing now you can push generally hard I, I mean, I wouldn't like slam it because you don't want the Windex to come off of the Q-tip, okay? See, so I'm getting excess water off the Q-tip. This time I'm going to start on the back end. And you'll start to notice a, a difference. Uh, and I say just keep going until you don't see any 
marks on your Q-tip. See, like I saw a little bit of black there, so I'm going to keep going. This is kind of a slow process, I know. But, it's in my opinion, it's the best way to do it without damaging. And this is a very dirty cart here. So I might take all four of those per side. You might have to make some more. Yeah. But that's why I picked this one to show you guys. Because I was like, ooh, that's a real dirty one. Man, it's still getting black. And we haven't even touched the other side yet. No. And as they dry, you can push a little bit harder. You just gotta, it's, it's a feeling sort of thing, you know? You can feel it out. You just gotta go with the flow, you know? Like if water's starting to come out by pushing it down, you're pushing too hard. Ooh, that's looking nice and shiny. Okay. So we got one more, we're gonna flip it over. Okay, this side isn't that dirty. Same thing. It looks a little different. Treat it the same way. Slowly turning your Q-tip as you brush off the dirt. Yeah, see this one didn't even turn black. I mean it did a little bit. Okay. I don't know if you guys can tell, but there's a, there's a significant difference right there. Well, if I ever get a heavy corro corroded game, I'll show you. Um, this one's pretty good. So then, we didn't need, like, okay, the reason for these here, the backup ones, is if you see some, uh, some water on there, you can quickly grab one of these and mop it up. In fact, that's what I usually do at the end. I'll just go like this and get a dry one in there. Just because you don't want, like, any water on there. It's not going to hurt it. But it's just, you know, safety precautions. It's better to just get it done, you know? So then the last thing I do... I throw these away. You'll have a little bit of Windex on, on your paper towel. If not, spray some on there. And then just kind of dab it. Like, like dab. Just... You know what I'm saying? Do a little dab. Dab, dab, dab. That's just to get the if any of the little co uh, cotton from the swabs are on there. That's the reason I do that. Now that is a nice looking pin connect. Look at that. If you would have saw it before, you can you could physically see the dirt, and now those things are shining right up. See. Now for the board, that's a different story. I always say if there's dirt on the green, let it be. It, it's not going to affect it. Those pins, because, okay, here, because here's how it works. These pins are what connect the information to the Nintendo. That green is like a coating almost. It's not, but it, just think of it as one. So if it's under the, if it's on the green, it's more than likely going to work just fine. The dirt isn't going to affect it anymore. Um, so that's why I said physical abrasions and stuff. That's a whole different story, but we're talking dirt. You'll probably do more damage trying to get it off of the green part. So I say just leave it. Just leave it. We're only worried about those brass parts. So there we go. Uh, board is clean. Pretty easy, right? So uh, just go over it. You hit it with the dust. Remember, tap it. Lay out your Q-tips. Wet them down with the, the glass cleaner. Let them dry up for a second. Roll them. I like to roll them on the paper towel to get the excess off. Brush just like your ass. Back, you know, back to back to back to or front to back, you know. Same here. You know, you want to wipe it away. Do it on both sides. Get your paper towel, dab off the cotton. Good to go. So now we go back to our our uh, casing, whatever you want to call it. So now this is where we get into the detail. This is why I like the little light. See. The, the best way to do it, in my opinion, is keep this stationary and use your head. I know you'll look like an idiot, but see, like, you can kind of, like, pinpoint. You might have to move this a little bit. Kind of go, oh, okay, get in there and stuff like that. 
All right, so we're gonna take another paper towel. And yeah, you go through paper towels. It's a couple bucks, man. Uh, just deal with it. So here, we're gonna use the same technique with these. But it's still a second. I always do two rounds. I don't know why. I'll let it dry for a second, let it soak in, because then it starts drying up again. Hit it again. <clears throat> okay, I have our backups ready. Now, we're going to do more of a detailed clean here. Now, I'm going to go over the spots that usually have the most crusty stuff in it. That's right here where you put your fingers. A lot of people, I've, I've even asked people, they don't understand what this crevice is for. It's actually there for you to slide it in, like, to grip. That's why it has the grooves in there. But because of that, you get some nasty shit in there. So you just want to get these. Don't be afraid to push down. This isn't the pins anymore. Oh my gosh, dude, that turned instantly black. And this isn't the last cleaning method. So, like I said, this is just step two of three. Keep that in mind. I mean, look at that. That thing turned black. Like, instantly. Um, hit it with the other side. Ah, see, that's already looking beautiful. Okay, uh, right here, where it latches, those are some nasty areas too. Just, and that's just because it's what's exposed, even when you have it in the casing. So, like, it tends to collect there. So, you want to hit both of these. Oh, yeah, see, this one had, this one turned that side instant brown. And we're not rubbing the pins, so you can get these things pretty dirty. You know, like, when, you, when you're rubbing the pins the brass connectors if you see dirt stop because you're just rubbing dirt on it but when you're talking about this casing you don't have to worry so much and then of course if these work perfect for it the holes where the screws are just shove it in there shove it in there give it a few spins And uh, that's about it. Those are the, the big heavy areas. Uh, again, when it comes to this, you want to just check your own, you know, because like I said, every cart's different. So, you know, sometimes those corners in there build up a little bit. But yeah, the big areas are whatever you want to call this, the fingerboard or something, where the clips are and the holes. So that one looks pretty good. Same thing kind of on this one. Uh, the top, do I do this for a living? No. Uh, I play retro video games for a living, and I've been collecting for 30 plus years. And if you look at my collection, minus this one that I just bought, I've had people go in there and go, that is the cleanest NES collection they've ever seen. Um, so that's why I said I am not a professional. Um, but, yeah. Oh, bugs in it? Oh, yeah, I've opened up a few of these and found some fun surprises. <laughs> okay, so like just like the other one, this this little finger spot, this is one of the the, the main areas you want to get in with the Q-tips. You know, just get in that groove. Like I said, don't be afraid. They're not made of glass. They're not going to break. Get in there, scrub. You know, put some ass into it. Don't be afraid to clean. Oh yeah, see, man, that did that did a number. And then of course, right where those clips are, like I said this is another spot. We're going to detail clean here. It is kind of a zen experience. That's why I'm taking my time, and I'm really showing you guys how to do this. Because all you all you need is... Oh, thank you for that follow, Mystery. I appreciate it. Um, you'll, you'll like me better when I'm playing games. Uh, it's, this is Dr. Adam OS today. Uh, well, for now. We're going to play some games later here uh, for my book. But, uh, yeah, okay, so the main, the main areas to look for when it comes to cleaning, okay, so like I said, there's the, the, the basic cleaning, then there's the more detailed, and then there's the detailed, detailed. So we're on stage two. We're just getting the big spots. Uh, so those are, those are big spots, and then, of course, this grading spot here. Now, like I said, be sure to stay away from the label as much as possible. Um, I know that's, that's going to be hard, and if you hit it, it's not going to be a big deal. But like in these grates, 
you can kind of see where it collects. That's why you have the little light. If you don't have the light, um, like your cell phone or something works just as good. But, oh yeah, see? But these Q-tips work wonders for this. Oh yeah, see that's coming right up. Now, if this doesn't, the Q-tip doesn't get it, we're still not done. That's what I said. Like you're using the Clorox non-bleach, non-bleach, no bleach, bleach-free, no bleach, no bleach, bleach be gone. On the outside to get like dust and stuff. This is to get more of like, you know, the crud. And then we're gonna go back a third time and spot it. You know, like literally, we're gonna spot clean it. Um, so yeah, that, those are the spots right there. The spot where you put your hand is a big one, where it connects uh, the two pieces and this grating. So now, and I always change paper towels. I said it's dirt. You're cleaning dirt. Keep it clean. Okay. So now the detailed service. This is where we get into our precision screwdriver set. Now, if you work with electronics, you probably already have one of these. If you don't, you can get what's what's called a bevel. Uh, they're used for wood carving. Uh, they work just as good, sometimes even better, because they have. Uh, I'll show you. Because they have like a, an edge to them that's like angled. So I like to make stubs and wands. Uh, so I I have bevelers here. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. See, it has like an, an edge to it that's kind of slanted. So you can use that corner, but it does kind of destroy the edge if you actually use them for wood carving. So like I said, I, I wouldn't recommend it, but they do work really well. And they make actual smaller bevels. Like these ones are pretty big. Uh, you can get a smaller set of bevels for like 15 bucks. Uh, but yeah, we're just gonna use one of these bad boys. Uh, it's a precision uh, screwdriver kit. Uh, we're going to use the flatheads. I like to use the bigger of that set. Uh, that's why like a, a big screwdriver really doesn't work too much. Because these have a very fine point to them. You know, a regular screwdriver has like a flattened edge there. It's Like these are kind of sharp almost. Uh, so they, they get really, they get in there really good. Alright, so we have that. We're going to have these to soak up anything. And now we're going to take a second paper towel. And if you had scissors, like you should. Like I said, I'm just, I'm just doing this off the cuff. I don't have like a script or anything, so bear with me. We're going to cut these, essentially, into little squares. And I'm talking like little squares. See, you can do them about that size. I like them about that size because sometimes you want to double it up. And you want to use different areas of it. So we have our Q-tips ready to mop up some uh, Windex if it comes up to it. You know, you just grab and go. Boom. Um, we got our squares of paper towels. And we got our handy dandy little screwdriver, right? So what we're going to do then is we're going to hit the little paper towel with that. Remember, let it soak a second. Don't instantly put it on there. Just like count to 10. I mean, that's all you really need. Count to 10. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put the screwdriver. I'm going to fold it a couple times. Like I said, that's why you want that size because, you know, it depends. And then we're going to fold it over. So now, and then you want it that size so you can hold it. See? Now what you're going to do, is see, I'm going to start it on this edge right here. Like right here on the edge. So like you can kind of see where it's at. And then you just make your way down as you clean. Remember, what I always I always do the squeeze test. Squeeze it, and if it doesn't, like you're gonna feel obviously some moisture, but if it's not like dripping, you're good. So now we're gonna take our game and we're gonna use our little spotlight and search for little areas. Like the first thing I see is right in that crevice right there. Cause you know the the Q tip can only go so far. So now we're just gonna sit there and Look at that. I got a line out of it right out of the gate. See? You just get in there. But you always want to double it or triple it a few times because you don't want to scratch the console. Remember, it shouldn't take more than a little bit of pressure. 
to get it. And then sometimes you just do that, put it back in, boom. And then you just keep moving it down. One little square goes a long way because you can do a line and then you can just fold it over a little bit further. See? And now that line, I don't know if you can see it. See how the dirt was there? But now I'm, I'm doing here. And you can just get in there and go to town. Again, try not to touch the label as much as possible. And if you want to wear gloves, you can do that too. But I personally don't like the gloves. I like to feel it because uh, a lot of times when you wear the gloves, you, you don't really have a good sense of what you're doing. And when you get into something precise like this, you want to have like a good grip on things. You know, you want to like hold it. Just to me, it just feels more natural and easier to clean this way. All right. And don't be afraid to don't don't try to like use the same towel so much you know like they're paper towels they're like two cents each you know you're gonna go through like three per game and then you can even reuse some of the towels if you really wanted to just don't be a cheap ass is what I'm saying like give your game a good clean you know um, you only should have to do it once so don't be don't be afraid to get in there get dirty and also at the same time when you see it's getting dirty like I don't know if you can see this but like you can see the dirt on there when it gets to this point just move on just move on just get a new piece move on alright so we're going to look around uh, anything that has a corner this is a perfect thing to do again we're using a little uh, precision screwdriver uh, they make these for computers so if you go to a computer store, you can probably find them. I got mine at uh, Home Depot for like, I think 12 bucks or something. They're, they're very cheap. Um, they're very small. All right, so the outside looks pretty good. I saw a little spot here that we didn't get. Remember, I like to move my head. It seems to get the better angles. Like you just keep it there and you do this and then angle it again. Look. I mean, you look like a, a retarded peacock, but you'll have the cleanest game on this on the black. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing on the inside. Uh, we're gonna move. Remember, don't stay in the same spot. Are you rubbing dirt on dirt? We don't want to rub dirt on dirt. Get into all the little crevices. This is where this comes into play really well. See, like these little spots here. You can get in there and just go to town. You can feel it. You know, you can feel your screw head getting in there. Oh yeah, see. So let's move our spot, stuff it in there, and just go to town. Remember, don't push too hard because you don't want to break through this and then scratch your your, uh, your plastic because it will scratch it. Oh yeah, it'll definitely scratch it. Okay, let's get a new piece. And yes, it is kind of a slow process. But see, you just put on some tunes, maybe a movie, or like, uh, I like to put on a podcast, because you're just listening then, you don't really have to watch it. And then, of course, like, I'm going slower, you know, you can get much faster than this. It just, like I said, each each individual uh, cart is different, you know, you just, you have to play it uh, by eye or ear, or whatever you want to say, and uh, just go for it. But see, look at that, even dragging it in this spot where we cleaned earlier, because you're getting into that crevice with this small little screwdriver I mean you're getting everything this way see so this this right now looks absolutely beautiful and then see when you see a spot you don't even have to use a screwdriver just kind of go go to town on it boom half of it's done we're going to move on To the back side, which in my opinion is a lot easier to clean. I always start with the, the front side because of that. Oh. 
All right, so we're gonna go back here in our troubled spots from before with the Q-tips. Get in there. Okay, those look pretty good. Yeah, a little bit. Now, one of the spots you can do, just make sure, like I said, make sure it's nice and dry. Do your, your squish test. You can get it in and around that sticker. Because sometimes that sticker doesn't go to the edge and it collects a little bit of a goop in there. Like I said, just be real careful. Don't push real hard. And then instantly get one of these and wipe it down. Just don't allow any moisture. I mean, these things cost like 10 for a penny. Totally worth it. Just get in there. All right. The back side looks pretty good. I'm uh, Another fun thing to do is go over this uh, indention here where it says Nintendo of Japan patent pending. A lot of times dirt will get up. Oh, see, I'm pushing a little too hard. You can hear it. And you're going to hear it a little bit. Let's say you don't want to scratch anything. Okay. Beautiful. All right. So then you can take your squares at this point. Just look for anything. Just look for anything, you know. Give it a nice once over. Use your little light. See what you missed. You know, usually you can just kind of go over it like I'm doing. Boom. Okay. Remember, just always get a fresh. Always get a fresh one. I advise that when wiping your ass, too. I'm one of those people, I'll use toilet paper, and then you gotta have a wet one at the end, man. Get yourself some ass wipes. They're worth the money, trust me. Do the dry, and then you do the wet. It's a life, it, it changed your life, I promise you. All right, so we're gonna go in here. Okay, see, I saw a little spot, so I'm gonna get a screwdriver. Where did I see it? Ah, okay. Get fresh. It's just dirt, it's dirt. All right, so now we gotta reassemble everything. Get rid of the dirt. See, you just, uh, that's why I like these things. You just, boom, fold it over, throw it away. <clears throat> Pretty easy to put back together. The only thing you have to remember is what direction to put the board back. Now most of them, if, if it's not like a custom made, We'll, we'll just slide right in there the right way. See? Like, I'm trying to put this in here. See how it's not fitting? This is not fitting. Like, you, you'll see. Like, you'll get, like, one side in and the other won't. You flip the bad boy over. And look at that. It's like a puzzle piece. It doesn't look like it. But one of these are... One of these, uh... Plastic sides... Are higher. Slightly higher. In most. Like I said, if you get, like, these knockoff or homebrew games sometimes they don't line up and if that's ever the case like you just can't figure it out I'll show you how to do it take the front of the game place that facing down now you want the pins facing towards you you take whatever these chips are called and put those down easy as that chips down well, they would be face up. They'd be face up, technically. We're facing them down. I do it this way because you want to you want to put this on second. See, you want to put the front the front of it down first. Chips 
down second. And then this, because it has these prongs, you want to slide it in. And it should line up nice. So now we want to take our screws. And I'll show you something. Never completely tighten it. Once you start to feel pressure coming back, stop. Go on to the next one. And I'll show you why in a second. If you tighten one too much, it could ruin the other uh, slots and how they line up. See, like, I'm starting to get a little resistance there. I mean, obviously, you're going to have a little bit the whole time, but you know what I'm saying. Like, you just feel for it. When you start to feel like it's taking a little bit more effort, stop. Okay. So now that it's taking a little bit of effort, we're going to go. Now, I like to use the two-finger method. See, like, I'm having trouble moving it now. I'm not cranking it. You don't need that. See? You just do this. See, I'm starting to feel that pressure. Now, if I pushed hard enough, I could keep going. But, like, when you get to that point, you're pretty much good. See, now I'm good. You don't want to tighten it too hard. Because it, you remember, this is just plastic. It'll ruin the plastic. It'll strip it. You can do the test. Do the shake test. Hold it by this corner up here. In here. Don't push down. Just hold it. And give it a shake. See? You know, it's not, it, I don't feel anything moving. Make sure everything looks good. And voila, look at that. You have, you have an idiot who just fucked up his headband. Oh. But see, look at that. That looks like a brand new cart now. Your pins look nice. All the labels are intact. I mean, this was a dirty, dirty, dirty game. And now it looks almost brand new. Eight bucks. I said it takes a minute, but like you should only have to do it once. Come on. See, mine's got like this extra shit on there. But it's damaged to the case. But other than that... That is beautiful looking NES car. Look at that. Now, when it comes to storing them, obviously, these dust sleeves are the way to go. You know, if you're putting them on your shelf ready to play. Now, for preservation's sake, you can get these online. Uh, they're kind of expensive. They're about like a buck each. Maybe you can get them a little cheaper if you buy them in bulk. Uh, they come flat. Obviously, I put this one together ahead of time. But see, uh, they don't. Obviously, they don't fit with this on there. That's up, man. So you got to take it out of here. But these cases are fantastic. See, you stick that bad boy in there. You don't need the dust sleeve with it. And now you have a nice preserved case. Uh, no dust or any fingerprints can get on it because see like a lot of times you, you have these dust cases Cases if I can talk see the, you have to make the choice uh, When you're in when they're in these though the all the labels are exposed especially this outside one And if you have it on a shelf, it'll collect dust and break it down. These things are amazing You know um, they suck if you're like constantly playing it because you got to undo it and it just ruins them but like if you're just putting it on a shelf for a collecting I recommend these over the dust sleeves any day. Dust sleeves are good for games where you're going to be pulling them off the shelf and playing more often. Um, if you're a collector, I recommend getting two copies of each game, a playing copy and a set copy. Uh, that's what I do. Uh, I know it sounds dumb, but yeah, it's just that's collecting for you. I swear by these cases, though. Once I got these cases, I haven't had any issues with the labels, the cleaning, the dust. They're absolutely amazing, especially for a buck each. You know, you're talking about a game that costs way more than that and finding another copy. So yeah, you clean it up real nice, make sure it's nice and dry before you put it in something like this, and there you go. Boom. We have a game, and we have a nice clean one, and it's ready to go on the shelf and stay there for years and not break down, get dusty and nasty. Uh, claim shell. They did use claim shell cases. Uh, here, in fact, I'll show you.
Okay, now these are kind of rare. They're they're hard to come by. They're a little more expensive. You can get like off-brand ones. Like this is an obviously this is a Nintendo uh, issued one. Really, the only way you can tell is that little label in there. Uh, but they're they're perfect. Uh, they don't fit with these cases though. See, if you try to put a game in there with this case, it it doesn't fit in this bottom left corner. Just a warning. Plus, you wouldn't need it. So, the reason that uh, corner's there is to hold the game in place. Boom. Now see, I, I love these cases. The only problem with these is when it comes to displaying them, you're supposed to display them like books. So you'd have to make your own labels, which is fine. You know, you can get a label maker. Uh, you can print out something, whatever you want. But see, you can't really see the title up here. Like, it, it's not that it's dirty. It's just that, like, it, the type of plastic, you, it's hard to see through. So if you're going to be putting them on shelves, it's not the best way to do it. Uh, uh, but I will recommend, if you do use these, the best way to clean them is to get dish soap. Put it in something big that you can have it open like this. Set these in the dish soap for about half an hour to an hour. Uh, get out your uh, Q-tips. You know, get in all those crevices. Uh, let it air dry, put it upside down like this on the table or wherever you're having it dry on, on a paper towel like that and let it dry overnight. Like for real, let it dry overnight. Do not dry to dry it with a towel and instantly stick your game in there. You're going to create a bunch of moisture. It's going to be trapped in there. And when it gets hot, it's going to evaporate and it's going to ruin the shit out of all your labels. These things have to be so dry that it's like your grandma's crotch in there. Like, for real. Like, you have to... These things have to be dry as fuck. Um, but, yeah, that's the best way to do it. And don't, don't let them soak overnight, either. You'll ruin the plastic. It'll it'll smell. Because um, plastic uh, absorbs whatever liquid and stuff that you put it in. You just want to put it in there, like, a 15 minutes to 20 minutes, maybe. I'll even go that low. Just enough to give it a nice coating. Let it soak for a minute. And then wipe it down real neat. And that's it. Uh... You can find these online. Uh, they're not as, they're about as expensive as these guys, uh, which makes no sense. Why wouldn't you want these? Again, this is for displaying. See, like I can put this in here, and there's even room for the booklet in the back. Like I, I, I uh, the ones that have booklets. Obviously, this one didn't come with a booklet, which sucks. But you can stick the booklet in the back, which is nice too. But see, you can see the game. You can see the top. So this is, these are perfect for displaying, you know, see, these are not, uh, these are perfect for games that you're going to often play because they're just enough and it's easy access. So like I said, easy access for playing, get the dust sleeves for conservation and collecting. I recommend these cases here. If you really have like a prized possession that you're going to display like this get these you know because you can display them like this but they're not good for you know a collection of having to read the labels you know you barely see through the front and that's kind of what it is that's what it's meant for so there you go uh, if you have any questions let me know uh, again cleaning your system is a little bit different you know they have cleaning they have uh, things set aside specifically for that so uh, I recommend getting those. Uh, using the Windex always works for me. Remember, never too moist. You always want it just moist enough to do the cleaning. Do the squeeze test. If it comes out, just dab it or let it dry. You know, I, you saw me waving it. Sometimes waving it with the air helps a little bit. Um, I said the, the bleach or non-bleach Clorox, no bleach, bleach free, no bleach. Write it on there with the sharpie. Make sure, because um, I'm telling you, the bleach will destroy everything. It's not good. Uh, the other things I went over, uh, the, the 2032 watch batteries for safe state games. Um, you will have to learn how to solder, though, for that. And uh, I think that's it. Yeah, the little screwdrivers work wonders. Anything like that will work, though. Uh, get yourself a set of these. 
Uh, you really only need the one size. The bigger ones, I forget what they're for. Um, I did, but I don't think I've ever used it. I'm going to use the smaller one. And uh, that's it, guys. So I hope you learned a lot. Um, again, if you have any questions, throw them in the comment section or just, you know, hit me up somehow. Uh, like I said, I'm not an expert. I've just been doing this for many years. I've gone through trials. I've uh, done things the wrong way. I've destroyed games. Um, you know, like I've been through it all. I've, I've tried everything you've heard because there's like a thousand different ways to do it. But this, to me, seems to work the best. It's the most efficient. It doesn't ruin the games. Like, I'm sure there's better ways to clean them, like, more precisely with better chemicals, whatever. I don't care. This cost a buck. This cost a buck. These cost a couple bucks. This cost, like, ten cents. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're looking at, like, four bucks in supplies. And you're good to go. So, that's, that's my quick... Well, I guess not quick, but easy, efficient way of cleaning video games. Uh, do that like, subscribe thing, follow, whatever it is you do. You guys know how to do that. And until next video, guys, peace.